hashtag South by SXSE. We've got a, a stack of board up there, so uh, do get involved in that. Um, I'm going to do a very brief introduction before handing over to our, uh, our crack team uh, from IMRS Worldwide, who are going to tell you uh, in far greater depth about this year's uh, fantastic event. Um, it's my fifth year uh, at South by Southwest uh, earlier this year in March, much like, I think, uh, the IRIS team. And it, it's, a, it's an absolutely astounding event. Um, I'm not going to steal any thunder from the guys, but suffice to say, it's probably the, uh, the preeminent um, emerging technology uh, event uh, around the globe. And we at the IPA take it hugely seriously. Um, during the course of five years, I went there on my own five years ago and said, we've got to take people back and support the ever-growing UK agency community that goes out there. So amongst the tens of thousands of people, there's something like 200 to 250 UK agency people uh, now attend out there. Uh, and we like to hang out with them, buy them a drink, and, uh, and curate their thoughts and experiences. Um, but the, the event is, it is grown beyond recognition. Um, even five years ago, it was considered to be getting big by the real people who go, <coughs> who predominantly go, which is the tech guys. Uh, and it's probably doubled, if not tripled, in size during the course of the last five years. And that does pose some questions because we're, we're advertising and, and marketing communications people, <coughs> and some of us like to try and call when something's jumping the shark or it's eating itself, it's getting a little bit too big. And, and this year was perhaps the first year where some of the kind of clever clogs going, yeah, is this, is this the year? Perhaps it's got too big. Uh, and frankly, that's utter rubbish. Okay, the, the bottom line is the, the event that you're going to hear about today, we're just not centrally important to. Okay, it, will, it, can, it existed before we were interested in it, and it will exist if all of us decided not to go next year. They wouldn't barely notice. It's about technology. Uh, and technology, it's not like it's getting less important. Okay? Technology has just become part of the fabric of our lives, um, part of uh, our economies, part of our societies, and indeed an intrinsic part of, of marketing communications. So it's not going anywhere. Uh, and if we do try and call it and say it's uncool, we'll just have to come back in a year or two's time with our tail between our legs and say it's cool again. Um, so it's too big in many respects to fail. So it's really like a nice, very nice giant bank. Uh, it's not the best analogy for a tech festival, so I apologize. But I couldn't think of anything else. Um, I'm about to hand over to the team. Before I do, I just want to say one thing, which is we have Framestore here uh, with some demonstrations uh, of their work uh, and, and uh, involvement with Game of Thrones and Interstellar. So do check that out uh, after, after we, we wrap up. There's also going to be a lot of Tex-Mex uh, refreshment on hand. Uh, but without further ado, I'm going to hand over to our, uh, our cracked lineup today. Uh, First up, we've got Sam Noble, co-founder and uh, chief strategy officer, uh, with David Cagle, creative technology director, and Jordan Harper, technical director. So lots of technology up there. I think they left my bit of tech out of my job title because that was too, many, too much tech. Uh, so anyway, so everyone welcome. Enjoy the show. Uh, do please tweet. Over to you, Sam. Thanks, Nigel. Um, so yeah, South By is important in general terms. South By is very important to Iris um, in specific terms. Many of you will know that you know, we bang on a lot about participation branding um, and the requirement for brands that really want to succeed in the modern networked economy to, to make the leap from being just another credible option in their category to, uh, to being a vital and vibrant participant in consumer lifestyles. And South By every year gives us fresh ideas fresh insights on, um, on how we do that for our clients. So it's a kind of pivotal, um, a pivotal you know, point in our calendar um, and should springboard into a lot of the work that we do with a lot of our clients kind of moving forward through the year. You'll be pleased to know we're not going to bang on about participation branding or IRIS. Um, we're going to talk about uh, South By. And we're going to do two things. We're going to try to bring a bit of the, the vibe and the spirit of, uh, of Austin um, to Southwark so you can get a feel for, for what it's like to experience the energy and potential of over 30,000 bright-minded, diverse, um, extremely passionate people coming together around essentially the twin goals of making people's lives and uh, the world a little bit better and making money. Um, and, it, and South By, there's no tension between those, between those things. They're, they're very much aligned kind of objectives for kind of everybody at the, at the festival. And um, kind of more importantly, we're going to try and give you, in one hour, 
It's a hell of a challenge. The best analysis that we can um, of what we can learn from South by this year, and critically, what we can start to act upon as, as businesses, brands, and you know, kind of marketeers in the room. So it's going to be jam-packed. It's going to be fast-paced. We're probably not going to fall over each other and wires and stuff along the way. Um, but so hold on to your Stetsons. And um, to start, thank you. To start, <laughs> we um, we want to just give you a quick zip through some of the um, of the biggest headline news um, that popped up during the week. Thanks, Sam. Well, one thing uh, you couldn't move for falling over at South by were robots. Um, this little mechanical busker was uh, trundling down 6th Street with his almost kind of apologetic robot creator um, behind him. But beyond that, we had the robot Petting Zoo. Uh, this is a disaster relief robot um, that, that goes in as a first responder. We had friendly um, spider robots. We had a 3D printing flying drone robot. How many buzzwords can you get in one item for that? Um, and we had these tiny, cute uh, educational robots. But of course, the backlash began uh, on the Saturday, the uh, Stop the Robots uh, staged a human protest, chanting, goodbye to AI, you say robots, we say no bots. <laughs> and of course, beyond that, the South by Technocrati then jumped on that story. Everyone kind of, it, kind of, the idea fitted the sort of techno dystopia that we'd ended up in, having been in a world of extreme digital immersion for, for a week. Um, but actually, However, so many things you come across in South By, it turns out to be a hoax. Um, so it was a, it was a set up marketing event by an app called Quiver, um, which is actually in some ways kind of typical of what South By has become to some ways. It's kind of like an internet parlance, the interwebs IRL or in real life. So it's full of clickbait of session titles that you want to go to, but you end up and you find it's just led by a kind of brand effort. And you think, oh, it's not quite what I hoped it to be. There's viral marketing stunts everywhere. So there's, a, there's quite a lot of that kind of internet in real life. Another big piece we saw was virtual reality, absolutely everywhere. <laughs> um, so you had everything from car brands to insurance brands. Samsung did some brilliant work, actually, with the Gear VR and the Divergent experience. NASA was there holding up the fort with their 360 virtual reality experiences from their Mars robot, which is a, a quite an experience to stand on the surface of Mars. Um, and then we ended up in a rather farcical talk by Brian Schuster, who had predicted that virtual sex will be preferred over civilian sex at some point. I mean... Make your own mind up about that. Um, but actually, one of the good, as Nigel mentions, we've got some special guests here this evening. So Oscar-winning team Framestore are here with their virtual reality demos from South by Southwest. So we've got Game of Thrones, Interstellar. It's worth going over and having a little look when we get to the, the tacos and tequilas towards the end of the day. So moving on. Um, the last 12 months have been a pretty tough year for uh, sexism and, uh, and uh, gender equality and diversity in technology. We had Gamergate, um, we had Tinder's famous management bust up um, over sexual harassment. Um, but South By did a really good job of leveling things and sort of showing how to do it properly. Um, three out of five of their keynote speakers were women, but they didn't make a big deal of it. Uh, it, was just, it was just done. And it was um, the themes of gender and diversity and inclusion were, were percolated throughout many of the talks. However, there's no getting around some people's unconscious bias. So Eric Schmidt was on stage with uh, Megan Smith, who's the chief technology officer from, for the US government. And they were actually talking, and he was uh, enthusing about the, uh, the, the issues and how the, how ch the challenges faces, the glass ceilings faced by women. Uh, but he kept interrupting Megan. Every time she tried to speak, he would cut, cut across her. Uh, when, a, when a person from the audience asked a question, he would choose which one she would answer. And then eventually, one of the questions came up, and it said, um, have you seen how much uh, Eric is interrupting Megan? And then to which the audience applause, and he had to stand down and realize he is being a sexist uh, prick for himself. And uh, she then held the stage uh, for the rest of the talk, which was, which was great. So um, Slovakian company Aeromobil uh, are going to start selling their production-ready flying car in 2017. Uh, and they were talking in Austin about the future of transport uh, and how we're, going, you know, how, how we're going to manage to sort of safely and securely accommodate land and their commuters on sort of a day-to-day -day basis. And um, you kind of know that a technology has reached the mainstream when the law start to get involved. And uh, one of the interesting things in Austin well, there, there was a lot of discussion about regulation and legal issues, whether it was uh, drones being banned by the Austin Police Department for fear of all of these technologists coming into their little city and flying thousands of drones around in the air, crashing explosions, lots of 
uh, lots of controversy, or even as simple as kind of Uber not being allowed to pick up from the uh, Austin Bergstrom International Airport uh, because they weren't willing to pay a surcharge on the fee. You know, these these kind of technologies now are are, are not far in the future. They're they're happening now, and with a flying car in a couple of years, you know, who knows what's going to happen? But it's not all about sort of serious technology. Um, Grumpy Cat was back uh, three years after his show-stopping appearance uh, promoting Frisky's cat food. Uh, he's back marketing a brand of uh, Grumpy Chinos uh, <laughs> and also supporting some serious concerns, net, net neutrality with a banner that was flown over Austin all day. You kind of walked around the town, looked up, and was, what's that on the banner there? And you kind of get a little bit closer, and it's, it's Grumpy Cat. Okay. Um, and uh, there was another grumpy cat there as well. Um, Russell Brand was uh, scheduled to appear in order to promote a new documentary about him, uh, covering his sort of wilderness years and his recent rise as this sort of self-proclaimed voice of the people. Uh, only uh, the voice of the people didn't turn up. Uh, and what, what was really interesting about this, actually, was that nobody noticed. Um, LAUGHTER and, and maybe that's because uh, South By is not really a festival uh, that's kind of wooed by big names. It's not about the sort of pointless angst or hot air, uh, unless it's popping popcorn somewhere. Um, and the focus this year was really on the sort of makers, the artists, designers, developers, the engineers, the thinkers who are, who are kind of building the future, uh, but today. So, um, so uh, cue the weak joke from one brand failure. To, uh, oh yeah, I, did, I did warn you, um, <laughs> to another. So, um, yeah, McDonald's probably landed the biggest festival fail f um, from a brand. Um, they had this lounge and they hired a load of music hats to come and play at their lounge and um, like forgot to, uh, to offer to pay them um, and uh, managed to get outed on kind of social media for this, caused a, caused a big old storm and they had to do a very public flip-flop um, around it, which kind of just left everyone even more confused around, you know, what on earth they were doing at the festival in the first place and um, what they were supposed to be adding to, to proceedings. So um, a, a really kind of poor attempt at kind of making a corporate sponsorship at South by work. Um, in comparison, you've got a brand like Mophie, who um, the mobile phone accessories uh, company that uh, generated a load of very sort of heartwarming uh, PR through their tweetable... St. Bernard's enabled recharge and rescue service for mobile phones. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just really, 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 really sweet. Um, and GE, too, were another brand that really stuck out, delivering a, a kind of unique, credible, and, and enlightening experience with their barbecue research center, which, believe it or not, um, hooked a load of hungry festival goers um, up to some brain monitoring gear um, and tracked how variations in a uh, type of food, in heat, in uh, different sources, in cooking techniques, um, created different impacts on their brain activity. Um, and, you know, showcased some impressive real-time data and analytics chops in the, in the process. Um, but more importantly, they married that um, with a kind of stellar panel performance from Linda Boff um, around how they've transformed their media manifesto to become a leading light in, in content marketing. And, Many of you will have heard us talk about GE um, in, in this space before. Um, and to use her phrase, how GE are operating like tomorrow's programmers rather than yesterday's marketeers, which is a kind of phrase that really stayed with us. So the overall lesson from GE, I think, and, and indeed from uh, Mophie and from McDonald's, is if you want to be a South by Southwest hit as a brand, you've got to be the story, not the sponsor. So... I think those are just a quick, you know, zip through some of the uh, some of the headlines. Some more important than others. Some more, uh, you know, kind of lighthearted than others. Um, but if that's the headlines, what are the kind of really important stories that that lay behind them? And that's what we want to spend a bit of time uh, talking about in the in the rest of the session. And um, it's instructive, I think, uh, by uh, to start by taking a look at um, the profile of the keynote speakers this year. And um, unlike previous years, where arguably you know, the kind of big tech um, innovators and CEOs, uh, big entertainment personalities have kind of often dominated. This year saw a real shift in terms of, um, of diversity and actually the notion of the hybrid. So, for example, you had uh, Princess Rima, who's the lady in the, in the top left, part member of the Saudi royal family, 
uh, part trailblazing fashion retail CEO uh, and part women's rights activist. Really interesting blend. Um, you've got Nathan Meervold, uh, ex-CTO of Microsoft, um, and kind of member of that corporate technology world, um, but also part leader of the modernist cuisine movement. Um, you've got uh, this lady in the middle at the bottom, Martine Rothblatt, part most influential woman in corporate America, um, part medical technology innovator, and part pioneer and enthusiast for artificial intelligence. We'll talk a bit more about some of these people and, and what, they were, what they were saying um, in a bit. And I think the thing that kind of unites all of these people is that they're not defined by specific fields of expertise or disciplines or specialisms. They're playing in the spaces in between lots of, uh, lots of those things um, to create breakthroughs in, in culture and commerce. And uh, th this was another lady, uh, much the same ilk. And in fact, her talk um, was all about this theme around playing, playing in the spaces in between. She's Paola Antonelli. She is the head curator of the Museum of Modern Art in, um, in New York. And her, her talk was entitled Curious Bridges, Shaping How Designers Are Shaping the Future. And um, oh, I love this chart, planners. This is a planner chart. This is for you. Um, she talks a lot about how the most interesting kind of art and design from around the world today is generated um, by bringing different purposes, approaches, uh, concepts, techniques together and exploring the sort of blurring of the lines and the interplay between them to create new things of functional and emotional value. And I just wanted to kind of share two or three examples from her talk to they really sort of bring that, that thing to life in the world of kind of art and design and architecture and, um, and culture. Um, so, for example, um, MIT Media Lab uh, combining human design with uh, the power of data um, uh, data algorithms and organic life in the humble form of the, of the silkworm um, to build intricate architectural installations like the silkworm pavilion. Really interesting kind of blend of uh, man and animal, um, data and uh, creativity. Um, yeah, apologies for this one in advance. Uh, <laughs> Keep your tacos down. Um, so <laughs> this, is, this is Japanese artist Sputniko, who's um, sort of smashing together notions of gender experience by building and documenting uh, a machine that looks to replicate how it feels to you know, experience a period for men. Um, abdominal cramps, blood releases, of vials of your own blood that it's taken, um, a and a load of kind of emotional... Um, stimulus as well to try and kind of replicate the, the emotional elements of it. Go figure. Um, and on a sort of more, you know, palatable and accessible popular culture level, uh, she talked about Bjork, and, um, and actually Bjork is a sort of an embodiment of, of this, but also her uh, app Biophilia, which um, recently became MoMA's first ever app exhibit. And Biophilia basically brings together artist and audience in a kind of unique multi-sensory, multimedia, participative experience that sort of redefines um, the experience of music. Just to give you a little, little flavour. If you haven't had a, had a, you know, come across it or had a play with it yourself, I highly, highly recommend it. It's incredible. And actually it's evolved subsequently into a worldwide educational uh, initiative. Um, Really interesting techniques. And she's mad as a hatter, isn't she? Let's face it. So kind of what all these examples and speakers um, embody are this notion that the most interesting and powerful breakthroughs in culture and commerce are now, you know, not coming from specialist fields of expertise, disciplines and perspectives, but to use Antonelli's phrase, from the entanglement, contamination and collision of them. And the more we thought about this, the more we saw this, you know, as a really kind of um, powerful current running through, uh, uh, you know, much of what we saw and heard and got exposed to throughout, throughout the week. And we sort of articulated that, if you like, to help us and you guys kind of get our heads around that um, as this notion of, you know, kind of arguably more today than ever before, the need to collide to thrive. So 
what we're going to do is we're going to take you through five Collide to Thrives that cut across many of the talks, uh, debates, and ideas explored uh, at South by this year, um, and that we feel are kind of really significant and, um, and actionable for us in our world. Some of them are a, a bit more out there on the horizon um, than others, it's fair to say, but, but even those things, when we come on to talk about them, are near future. You know, there's stuff that people are doing real things about today that will redefine um, our experience of the world, of society, of, of each other.